what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of welfare? Personally, I just think of, uh, you know, people that uh, are provided money by the government. Uh, what's your view, what do you, what's your viewpoint on welfare? Um, I guess I don't have a problem with it, but, like, I just think that, you know, um, I feel like it should only be for a certain amount of time, and, like, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with it, I think, you know, if people, someone loses their job and they get put on welfare, like, that's fine, but, um, if they, you know, abuse that fact, then I think maybe, you know, that's where the problem is. What, what's your opinion on the government uh, helping uh, people in poverty, people that are poor? Uh, I think it's a, it's a great like it's a great idea, but I don't think that the government should use like money to help people because a lot of times they 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 give money for people and they, they don't even know what are they doing with the money. They can go and get drugs and stuff. So. I think it would be a lot better if the government helped the, the like the homeless people, the poor, the people that don't have like money, like to, to live and like help help them like with like I don't know giving food, giving something like giving like everything like besides money because money would be like they have no idea what they're doing with the money. So that's what I think. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of welfare? Beer money and drug money. Uh, can you, like, elaborate on that? Um, you know, every time I see, like, someone who's, like, a beggar who's trying to get money, like, they're trying to get it for beer, like, they'll straight up say, you know, I'm really getting this for beer money, so, I mean, I'm sure there's some people out there who need it, but other people, like, just abuse the system. The American welfare system is commonly misunderstood. When the Great Depression hit in 1929, unemployment increased to over 25% and millions of people fell into poverty, homelessness, and hunger. Congress failed to pass legislation that would create federal assistance, and the responsibility fell mostly to local and state-funded programs. After national protests rid the country, in 1932, the government passed the Emergency Relief Act, which transferred assistance programs to the federal government but nothing was being done to create jobs, decrease unemployment, and fix society and our economy. It wasn't until FDR and the New Deal when changes really occurred. Programs like the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Works Progress Administration, and the Social Security Act were created, and the American welfare system had officially been transformed into a system of social insurance. Up into the 1960s, the people on welfare assistance programs had grown. The AFDC, or Aid to Families with Dependent Children, which was a program created by the Social Security Act, had expanded to 800,000 families, and poverty had once started to consume America. President Lyndon B. Johnson declared his war on poverty and passed the Economic Opportunity Act. This act created increased funds to food stamp pro programs and created Medicaid and Medicare, which provided people with greater monetary benefits and public health care. From 1973 to the 1990s, the welfare system had taken many hits by the Republican administrations in control. Nixon's administration attempted to reduce the amount of welfare people could receive and complicated the application and verification process in providing welfare. In the 1980s, Reagan had declared his war on welfare and promoted his supply-side economic policy or trickle-down economics. This cut a lot of funding towards welfare programs, and assistance became more in the form of food stamps rather than welfare checks and housing assistance. In 1996, President Clinton had passed the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act. This act limited the amount of time people could be on benefits and promoted welfare to work programs to decrease federal assistance, dependency, and move more towards employment. Failure to report changes in financial information. An example of this type of fraud enraged the community against welfare when it was discovered that Amanda Clayton, a welfare recipient,
had won the lottery and still accepted benefits for six months after the win. She failed to report her change in assets and employment. She now faces charges for welfare fraud. Use of a false identity to obtain benefits. This type of fraud occurs when someone steals someone else's social security card and applies for benefits under their name. Failure to disclose criminal record. An example of this type of fraud is a person with a criminal record not telling their caseworker about it to receive benefits. Fraudulently reporting that a parent or child lives in the home. This type of fraud occurs when someone claims they have dependent children living in the household. They claim benefits on these children. Receiving benefits from multiple states. An example of this type of fraud is a person living in Michigan claiming benefits in Arizona. Society has placed a negative connotation on welfare and the average welfare recipient. In a campaign speech, anti-welfare supporter Ronald Reagan created this fictitious persona of a welfare queen. He told a fake story about an African-American woman who used 80 aliases to fraud the welfare system and receive benefits. This incident caused an increase in support for Reagan and his economic policy which in turn caused negligence in helping the poor in America and increased the amount of people living below the poverty line. A stigma was created during this era and carried on the, to present day that emphasized that all welfare recipients were defrauding the system. In all actuality, the amount of fraud in America is very little. However, we have the highest amount of children living in poverty than any other industrialized nation. In a 2002 investigation conducted by the U.S. Department of Labor showed that only 1.9% of all people re receiving welfare benefits have been defrauding the system. When hard times fall upon the country, Americans tend to blame the poor. The poor then receive reduced benefits as well as face the blunt end of an economic recession. The most effective solution to combating the welfare fraud in America is not reforming the benefits system of welfare, but the administrative and investigative efforts of the U.S. Department of Labor and the state's human services departments. Methods to enforce proper use of an individual's benefits have been made over the years. The EBT card has been implemented nationwide to prevent food stamp abuse and allocate food assistance through a credit card method that only allows certain items to be purchased and allowed at certain establishments. Instead of taking the money away from people in need to reduce the minuscule amount of fraud, funds should be reallocated to allow the government to investigate and prevent abuse. America shouldn't ignore poverty. Poverty is not a crime and people in need shouldn't be treated as such.